So most of us really cannot articulate why we do what we do, why the goals that we set are actually set. <laughs> if we did, it'd probably come down to a selfish reason. More than likely, I know most of mine used to be, and some still are. And I chose the grayscale of this video because that's kind of what our lives look at if we don't set the goals properly or, or if we don't live like we should. It's just a big life of gray matter, you know? <laughs> it's funny, I'm sitting in my ab lounger. That's what it's for, right? It's lounger. If I just had a little cup holder right here where I could drink some sweet tea, man, this would be worth the $5 that I paid for it. As far as doing ab exercises, I don't know. I don't really do ab exercises. But that's a selfish reason. Because I've always said, yeah, man, I'll have a six pack by working my tail off to get all these great abs. But, you know, how many people ever see me with my shirt off? Not many. I don't just walk around with my shirt off everywhere. Uh, so, selfish. I could care less what my abs look like. And that's selfish. Maybe my wife would appreciate if I had a good six pack. So, that maybe I should start doing that. But it's funny that the goals that we set and the decisions that we make and the why behind it. Um, like I said, most people really can't articulate what they do. And... Why do most people fail at their goals? Because they don't really know why. Or, or, or it's a selfish reason. i uh, give you an example. I a friend of mine, and he watches these, so you know who I'm talking about. And there's nothing wrong with it. And it's, it's nothing real personal, but he... At the age of like 55 or, or 52, he went back to college to get his four-year degree. Uh, he was a very, very successful uh, manager in what he did, but, you know, he wanted to move up in the world. He wanted to move up. So he worked his tail off at night. I mean, this, he was literally working like 70 hours a week and going to school at night and just made a lot of sacrifice. You know, ignored his friends, ignored his family, ignored everything except for work for a, a good purpose, he thought, to finally get this bachelor's degree. Well, he got it. There was no celebration, there was no joy, and he actually told me, he said, Curtis, it's rather disappointing. He said, I, I pictured something great. Once I got that diploma, he said, everything was going to be better. My life was going to be fulfilled. This was going to be a wonderful thing. And I worked so freaking hard. Now I'm actually kind of pissed off because nothing has happened. Nothing's changed. <laughs> and uh, I get that. I've, I've had it happen a lot. And I, I'm, it's because he didn't really know why other than he wanted to get a promotion, and that promotion didn't happen. But it happened many years later. But he really did have a strong why. He just hadn't articulated it. He wanted to get a promotion, well, for money, and why for money? To support his wife, to support his kids. He wanted to do this to show his children that, hey, you can be what you want to be. You can still achieve life, even if it's much later in life. You can set goals. You can obtain them. You, you can be great if you just work hard. And so he really did it to be a good example for his kids and to further the success of the entire family. But he couldn't articulate that. If he'd have thought that after he got it, He's like, man, all the wonderful things that this is doing for my family. Oh, my God, he could have celebrated. He realizes that now, I believe. And I'm so proud of him. That, that was hard to do. That was very hard to do. Imagine going to school after being out for, what, 30 years, 35 years. It's difficult. I was doing this uh, 
speech in front of a lot of people about goals and setting goals and the importance of the why behind it. And I, uh, it was in front of a lot of pharmacists and, and one of the pharmacy managers, I said, hey, you set a goal, become a pharmacist. You went through all this school, spent a ton of money to, to become a pharmacist. I said, but what happened when you actually got that degree? How did it make you feel? He said, you know, Curtis, I was actually depressed. He thought, what now? Oh, boy, I get to get a job. <laughs> I, I get to go work, you know, salary, work all these endless hours and deal with all these freaking rude people, all these people that want their C2 control medications and they cuss you out because they wanted a day early and then they... You call the police on you because they say you're a thief because you shorted them five pills. Now, when in reality, they took too many or they sold them or something, but now you're getting investigated by loss prevention because this person complained that you're still in their controlled drugs. Wow, what is a great thing to look forward to. He worked hard on that. So yeah, he was disappointed. He was depressed. We set these goals and, and we set our mind to all the wonderful things that's going to happen when we reach this goal. And it doesn't happen. Not, not the way that we think that it's going to. Because it, it, setting the goal is usually a selfish thing, right? I want to be a pharmacist because I want to make a ton of money. And he was making a ton of money. But it took a while to realize why it was important. I said, I, you know, when I started working out, I was 140 pounds, um, right out of high school, soaking wet, 140 pounds. And I was in a band, and as most people know, that's you know, the stereotypical, you're a geek, you know, all this band geek. And I, I, I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to be the band geek. I wanted to be the band guy that was an athlete. I wanted to be a band guy that was big and strong and powerful. And I was tired of people kicking sand in my face on the beach. Y'all all seen the whole thing, you know, the little 140-pound weakling getting sand kicked in his face. I mean, and that was me. You know, I had this one dude, state champion wrestler, used to pick on me all the time in high school. So, my God, I was going to start working out. I was going to get big, and I was going to kick his ass. And I... <laughs> <laughs> that's a selfish reason <laughs> right? but so I got really big and I big and big and I ate and I ate and I took everything in the world to get bigger and yet I, it was still never satisfying in fact at one point I thought man I wish I'd never even started this crap because now I can't stop and if I slowed down if I lost five pounds of muscle then I was actually so depressed I didn't want to get out of the house because I looked so small all you bodybuilders know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the opposite of, um, you know, people that are fat and everything. The opposite. I had a body image problem. But one of my wives was strong. One of my wives was important. It wasn't selfish. Because I imagined myself one day taking my kids to school. And I didn't even have kids at the time. And, you know... Me driving a, driving a truck, and everybody could see my huge arm, and everybody go, wow, kids, man, your dad's a freaking monster, man. He's awesome. You know, still egotistical, still self-serving. Uh, then, then I thought, well, I can teach my children how to exercise, how to work out, how to be healthy, how to look good and feel good, and have the confidence that you need to survive these days in anything. you got to be confident. So... When my wife changed to help my children, then it was different. Then it was a worthy goal. And that's one reason I keep up with it. And I want to live a longer, a healthier life, you know, for my family. I want, I want my wife to be proud of me when I take my shirt off. It's not very often. I want her to say, Dad is my husband, and he's hot. <laughs> she never says that. <laughs> but 
you know, that, that, that's the point. I, I'm exercising for other people in a roundabout way so I can continue to do it and it's, I'm being successful at that goal. If your goal is to become the richest person in the world, nobody gives a shit about you being rich if you keep it to yourself. Money goals should not be the means to an end. The money, being wealthy, being rich and successful and powerful, the means is the money. The end is serving others. If you can become a millionaire and you can solve the world hunger, oh my God, that's a why, that's a reason, that's the purpose for becoming wealthy. If you just want to get wealthy just for egotistical reasons and you want a Lamborghini and you want a big house and all this, that, and the other, man, it's going to send you down a lonely path and nobody cares. They don't. You're keeping up with the Joneses all the time. Nobody cares. And it's a never ending cycle, right? You buy this car, they buy a better car. You buy a golf cart, they buy a better golf cart. You buy a boat, they buy a bigger boat. It's never anything. And then you're going into debt. 75% of the people just making over $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck because you're keeping up with the Joneses and still nobody cares. How does it make you feel? Every time you get something better, somebody else gets something better than you because you're chasing the wrong goal. You're chasing the wrong dream. What are you going to do when you become rich, powerful, and successful? What are you going to do for others? How are you going to serve other people? I really think that's why most people fail at their goals because they're doing it for the wrong reason. If you can learn to articulate, really think, really sit and meditate and think, why is this important? Why am I chasing this goal? Why am I chasing this dream? Is it for self-fulfillment? Self-fulfillment on Maslow's hierarchy of needs is the top. Google it. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The top of it is self-fulfillment. But what is self-fulfillment? usually helping others man I, you know even Jesus said that one of his biggest thing is for to love him and to love others <laughs> so think about that I, I'd love to hear some of your opinions on what your goals are and why you're achieving them or why you're not achieving them because uh, you really were born of greatness and for greatness I know it's a long video but man, let's go prove it. I, I, I'm going to do some abs on my ab lounger, or I may take a nap. I don't know. See my abs? Yep. Didn't see them because they're not there. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'm going to start working my abs. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's for selfish. So I can look in the mirror and go, wow, I got some good abs because nobody else cares. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful day.